book two chapters one through three of the consoling thoughts of st francis de sales by jean joseph Huguet. this librivox recording is in the public domain book two consoling thoughts on trials of an interior life infirmities of soul and body chapter one maxims for perseverance in piety in the midst of afflictions to live constantly in devotion we have only to establish sound principles or maxims in our soul the first which i desire you to adopt is that of st paul all things work together for good to those who love god and truly since god is able and understands how to draw good from evil for whom will he be disposed to do so if not for those who give themselves unreservedly to him even sins which god in his goodness has forbidden are changed by the divine providence to the good of those who belong to him david would not have been so full of humility if he had not sinned nor magdalene of love for her saviour if he had not forgiven her many sins and never would he have forgiven them if she had not committed them behold the great dispenser of mercy he changes our miseries into favours and from the adder of our iniquities makes a salutary balm for our souls tell me then i pray what will he not do with our afflictions our labours our persecutions if it happens that something grieves you no matter from what quarter it comes be assured that while you love god all will turn to your good and though you cannot see the means by which this good will come be assured that it will come if god places the bandage of ignominy over your eyes it will be to render you an admirable sight a spectacle of honour if he permits you to fall like st paul whom he cast to the earth it will be to raise you up with glory the second maxim is that god is your father otherwise he would not command you to say our father who art in heaven and what have you to fear being the child of such a father without whose providence not a hair of your head can fall it is wonderful that being the children of such a father we have or could have any other anxiety than to love and serve him have the care he wishes you to have of yourself and your family and no more you will then see that he will have care of you think of me he said to st catherine of siena and i will think of thee o eternal father says the wise man thy providence directs all things do not look forward to the occurrences of this life with fear but accept them with perfect confidence that as they happen god will protect and deliver you he has guarded you until the present hold fast by the hand of his providence and he will assist you on all occasions and where you cannot walk he will carry you what should you fear belonging to god who has so emphatically assured us that all things work together for good to those who love him the true servant of god is not solicitous about the morrow he performs faithfully what god requires of him to-day and will perform what god will require of him to-morrow and the same the next day and the next day without a word thus he unites his will not to the means of serving god but to the service and good pleasure of god be not solicitous about the morrow and say not what shall we eat or wherewith shall we be clothed or how shall we live for your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things seek first the kingdom of god and all these things shall be added unto you this extends to spiritual as well as to temporal things remain in peace remove from your imagination whatever can trouble it 
and say frequently to our lord o god thou art my god and i will confide in thee thou wilt aid me and be my refuge and i shall fear nothing for thou art not only with me but thou art in me and i in thee your third maxim should be that which our lord taught his apostles has anything been wanting to you our lord had sent his apostles to various places without silver without staff without shoes without scrip with only one coat and afterwards he said to them when i sent you thus was anything wanting to you and they said no still more when you endure afflictions even when you had little confidence in god did you perish in those afflictions you will answer no and why then have you not courage to advance in spite of all other adversities god has not abandoned you until the present how will he abandon you henceforward since now more than ever you desire to belong to him fear not evil to come upon you from this world for perhaps such evil will never happen and even if it should happen god will strengthen you he commanded saint peter to walk upon the waves and saint peter seeing the winds and the storm was afraid and fear sank him he sought the assistance of his master who said man of little faith why didst thou doubt and reaching out his hand our lord helped him if god requires you to walk on the waves of adversity fear not doubt not god will be with you have good courage and you shall be delivered the fourth maxim is eternity it matters little how these transitory moments pass provided i enjoy eternally the glory of god we advance into eternity already we have one foot there provided it be a happy eternity for us what matter about these fleeting moments of pain are we aware that our tribulations of two or three days prepare for us innumerable eternal consolations and yet shall we be unwilling to support them the fifth maxim is that of the apostle god forbid that i should glory except in the cross of my jesus plant the cross of jesus christ crucified in your heart and all the crosses of this world will appear to you as so many roses those who have once been pierced with the thorns of the crown of our lord who is our head can scarcely ever feel any other thorns i have noticed in doves that they mourn as they rejoice that they sing the same air as well for their canticles of jubilation as for those in which they plaintively lament their dolors that whether joyful or sad they never change their tune it is always the same low rumbling murmur this is that holy evenness of mind which we should endeavour to possess i do not say evenness of fancy or of inclination but of mind for we need not make any account of the annoyances raised by the inferior part of our soul whence all whims and inquietudes proceed stirred up by the senses and passions when the superior part of the soul does not perform its duty of being master or when it does not keep good watch against the assaults and disturbances of its enemies to make war upon them and subject them to its laws i say that we must always remain firm and resolute in the superior part of our soul for whose fidelity we make profession and preserve a constant equanimity through favorable and unfavorable circumstances in desolation as well as in consolation the holy man job furnishes us with an example in point for when god multiplied favors upon him gave him children and sent him everything he could desire in this life he always returned the same thanks 
what did he say but blessed be the name of the lord this was his canticle of love which he sang on every occasion see him reduced to the extremity of affliction how does he act he sings his canticle of lamentation to the same air which he had used in the days of his joy we have received good things he says from the hand of the lord why should we not also receive evil things the lord gave me children and possessions the lord has taken them away blessed be the name of the lord no other canticle at any time than blessed be the name of the lord oh how like was this holy soul to the dove which always rejoices and mourns in the same soft notes thus should we act thus should we receive prosperity and adversity consolations and afflictions from the hand of the lord always singing the same sweet song blessed be the holy name of god and to the air of an unchangeable equanimity let us not act like those who weep when consolation is absent and do nothing but sing when it has returned in which they resemble certain animals that grow morose and furious when the weather is wet and gloomy but never cease to skip and gamble when it is beautiful and serene chapter two whence our miseries come our first misery is that we esteem ourselves if we fall into any sin or imperfection we are astonished troubled impatient simply because we thought there was something good resolute solid within us and therefore when we find that there was no such thing we are grieved and offended at having deceived ourselves if we knew ourselves as we really are instead of being amazed to see ourselves prostrate on the ground we should be surprised to see ourselves stand for a single day or even for one hour endeavor to perform your actions perfectly and having done this think no more about them but think of what you have yet to do advancing with simplicity in the way of god without tormenting your mind it is necessary to detest your defects not with a detestation of trouble and vexation but with a tranquil detestation to behold them with patience and to make them serve to lower you in your own esteem regard your faults with more compassion than indignation more humility than severity and preserve your heart full of a sweet calm peaceful love our second misery is that we love ourselves if we have not sensible consolations we are sad if we meet with some difficulties in our just undertakings we are filled with uneasiness to overcome them because we are attached to our consolations our comfort and our convenience we only wish for honey in the service of god and do not look to jesus prostrate on the earth sweating blood through the effect of his interior desolation we refuse to understand that as dry jams are the best so the actions we perform in dryness are more meritorious in the sight of god than those which we perform in consolation god does not wish that we should enjoy the luxury of our faith our hope or our charity unless an absolute necessity requires it we possess those virtues nevertheless but we are like a child deprived by its tutor of the management of its possessions how happy we are to be thus weaned and deterred by our celestial tutor it is our duty to adore this amiable providence by casting ourselves into its arms no lord i do not wish for the enjoyment of my faith my hope or my charity unless to say to thee in truth though without sensible satisfaction that i would rather die than forsake my faith my hope or my charity lord if it be thy good pleasure 
that i experience no pleasure in the practice of virtue i acquiesce therein with all my will whenever any pain befalls us we must receive it with calm submission to the good pleasure of god when any matter of joy happens to us we must receive it peacefully with moderation of mind and without being too much elated chapter three conduct to be observed in interior trials it is an ordinary thing with those who begin to serve god and who have not yet had experience of the withdrawal of grace or of other spiritual vicissitudes that as soon as they lose the feeling of sensible devotion and the perception of that beautiful light which had invited them to run in the ways of god they immediately lose breath as it were and fall into very great sadness and pusillanimity persons well versed in the matter give this explanation they say that a reasonable being cannot remain for a long time famishing and without any pleasure heavenly or earthly but as souls elevated above themselves by the taste of superior pleasures easily renounce all visible objects so when by the divine appointment this spiritual joy is taken away from them they find they are also deprived of inferior consolations and not being yet accustomed to await patiently the return of day it seems to them that they are neither in heaven nor on earth but that they are to lie buried in a perpetual night in such a manner that like little children who have just been weaned and who still seek their mother's breast they can only weep and languish being a trouble to every one but particularly to themselves not to fall into discouragement remark number one that god usually gives some foretaste of heavenly delights to those who enter into his service in order to withdraw them from the pleasures of the world and to encourage them in the pursuit of divine love as a mother to accustom her little infant to the breast put some honey there number two that nevertheless this good god by an arrangement of his wisdom sometimes takes away the milk and honey of his consolations that we may learn to eat the dry and substantial bread of a severe devotion practised in the midst of disgusts and agitations number three that great temptations often arise during times of aridity when we must fight continually against the temptations for they are not of god but endure patiently the aridity since he appoints it for our trial number four that we should never lose courage in the midst of interior pains nor say i shall never be joyful for at night we should expect the light and on the other hand at the brightest spiritual time we should not say i shall never be sad for as the wise man observes in happy days we should remember the unhappy we must not hope in pain and fear in prosperity in both be humble number five i perceive that all the seasons of the year are to be found in your soul sometimes winter with sterility distractions torments disgusts and weariness sometimes the roses of may with the sweet scent of holy little flowers sometimes the heats of the desire to please our good god there only remains autumn when as you say you do not find much fruit but it often happens that in threshing the wheat and pressing the grapes we find much more than the harvest and the vintage had promised you would like always to have springtime or summer but it is necessary to have a change internally as well as externally in heaven there will be a perpetual spring as to beauty a perpetual autumn as to joy a perpetual summer as to love there will be no winter there but here winter is required for the exercise of self-denial 
and for the growth of a thousand beautiful virtues which flourish only in sterility let us then make our little steps forward if we have a good and resolute affection we cannot but advance well it is not necessary for the practice of virtues to be always attentive to them all that would entangle and perplex your thoughts too much humility and charity are the antiphonarians all the other virtues are annexed to them the preservation of a house depends on the foundation and the roof if we attend to which the rest will give us no great difficulty humility and charity are the mothers of virtues the others follow from them as little chickens do the hens number six that it is a sovereign remedy to discover our trouble to some wise friend who can solace us finally to conclude a warning that is necessary i will remark that in interior trials as in all other things our good god and our enemy have very different views god makes use of these pains to guide us to great purity of heart to an entire renunciation of our own interest in what concerns his service and to a perfect stripping of ourselves while the devil endeavors by these sufferings to make us lose courage to make us return to sensual pleasures and to make us wearisome both to ourselves and others that holy devotion may be decried and defamed but if you observe the instructions i have given you you will greatly increase in perfection by the endurance of interior afflictions of which before concluding i must say another little word sometimes disgusts sterilities and aridities proceed from indisposition of the body as when by excessive watches labors and fasts we are overwhelmed with fatigue and weighed down by drowsiness headache and other such infirmities which though they depend on the body do not fail to inconvenience the soul on account of the strict union that exists between both yet in this state we should always be careful to elicit many acts of virtue though in the summit of the soul and with our superior will for though our soul is asleep as it were through weariness that does not prevent the operations of our spirit from being most agreeable to god and we may say to him with the sacred spouse i sleep but my heart watcheth lastly if there is less pleasure in laboring thus there is as i have already said more merit and virtue as for the remedy it is to strengthen the body by granting it some alleviation and fitting recreation thus st francis ordered his religious to moderate their labors in such a manner that fervor of spirit might not be impeded and speaking of this glorious father he was once attacked and agitated by so dreadful a melancholy that he could not hinder it from appearing externally for if he wished to converse with his religious he could not if he withdrew from them he was still worse abstinence and macerations reduced him to a shadow prayer did not comfort him in the least he remained in this state for two years so that he seemed to be altogether abandoned by god but at last after humbly enduring this wild tempest the saviour restored to him in one moment a full and blessed tranquillity thus the greatest servants of god are subject to these rude shocks and others should not be surprised if they sometimes get one too end of book two chapter three